So are you the type of person that always gets the flu? There's no reason for us to always get the flu. Now we might have a compromised immune system from a multitude of things, uh, things that we are doing ourselves, the way we're eating, Maybe we don't have balance in our life. Maybe we're overworked, overstressed. Maybe we are continuing to deal with fear. Maybe we are around a lot of people that are sick. But even at that, we should not be getting sick because God has promised to protect us in Psalm 91 against pestilence. And God says that even though this person will fall to your right with the flu and this person will fall to your left, it shall not come near you. It shall not over, overcome or overwhelm you. So there are protection promises that we have even when we are around uh, sick people. The thing I always try to do is common sense first. Let's be practical because you, you are coming to these calls to get practical insight and information. You know, not everything has to be so super spiritual. Sometimes things are just practical. For instance, if you don't pay your mortgage, you're going to lose your home. There's not anything spiritual or demonic about it. It's just being responsible and accountable to follow some of the things in our life on a regular basis that can keep us uh, seeing the results that we desire to see. And I'm talking about health. So for instance, in my health, because I eat pretty healthy, you know, I splurged over this last December eating too many cookies and drinking a little more eggnog than I normally would. So of course I overindulge like many of us. And so what do you do? You know, while everybody's setting New Year's resolutions to go on these cleanses and to lose weight, I just decide to operate effortlessly in the fruit of the spirit. And the fruit of the spirit says self-control. That means that when I acknowledge that I'm overindulging, I just pull it back a little bit and I get back right on track. That's really how practical uh, the Christian life is and should be. Uh, a lot of things are plain, plain and simply common sense. So, uh, you know, I try to eat very healthy. You know, I, I watch a lot of what I eat. I used to be a fanatic on things like not, uh, not eating foods with GMOs and making sure everything was organic and grass fed. And while I believe in that, and there are some good uh, qualities to that and some good results that can happen to your body from eating cleaner, uh, you can be so hyper-focused on it that the fear of food will actually make you sick because you are partnering with fear. So if we fear things like GMOs or not eating organic or not eating clean, that fear spirit comes into our immune system and anything that operates out of fear automatically starts to have a really negative effect on every system in the body. So uh, we never want to have fear over food, right? So that, that's an unhealthy fear. And an unhealthy fear over food doesn't just mean anorexia or bulimia. That's an unhealthy attitude towards fear. And that is also demonic and that's an unclean spirit. But what I'm saying is uh, we can have unhealthy fears where we are counting points and counting calories and making sure we're not eating carbs and making sure we are not eating sugar. Uh, while things can uh, be practically uh, done in our lives, such as not eating a lot of sugar, we also want to understand that we can pray over our food and that we actually have the authority to bless our food. So all of this having to do with health, I'm getting to a point here with what we're going to talk about tonight, but we just have to be very practical, okay? Uh, and, and most of us aren't. Uh, we give a lot of credence to demonic activity without taking responsibility for a lot of the choices and decisions we make. So uh, back to the fact that my entire house got hit over the holidays, it was very unusual because the people that got hit were the following. First, my son-in-law, son who is very healthy. You know, you look at his weight and everything else and the way he and my daughter eat, they eat very healthy, et cetera. So there, were, there weren't any obvious reasons as to why he should have gotten sick, especially coming to my home. I take it very personal when someone comes into my home and they get sick, especially because in my home, I'm not ever sick and my husband doesn't get sick. So when someone comes here uh, and, and they get sick, I get very concerned. Now, my son-in-law did share with me that he was around some people at his church <laughs> who were sick. They go to a really great church, et cetera, but not everybody's in the place of understanding healing and how to resist the enemy. So he will flee. 
And sometimes sickness just takes a little bit more time than we care to than we than we care to want to uh, have to deal with. But anyway, when he came into my house, he was here for eleven days, and he was sick the majority of the time he was here in my home, and that really bothers me. Now, of course, while he was sick, my husband and I didn't have any fear of picking up his sickness. It was this long, long, horrible, fluey, headachey kind of thing that was going on. And, you know, it started very subtly and then it started to uh, pick up aggressively to where he was down for the count in his room. Now, many of you who know me would be asking, well, why didn't you pray or lay hands on him? And we're going to talk about this tonight. But one of the reasons I don't do that is because you have to be invited in to pray for somebody. And even though my son-in-law loves me very, very much. Uh, we've had conversations on how we both feel about healing as being God's perfect will. So even though we're identical in a lot of the views that we have on faith, where it, where it is most important, right, in our relationship, there are a couple of views where I've had to kind of, you know, help him a little bit to understand, you know, God's will for healing and God's will for healing in his children, not just for healing in general, but specifically and in, in, in especially for his children. Because no father would want his children to be sick. If you are a parent, you would not want your children to be sick. And if they came home sick from school, you would do everything in your power and in your will to make sure they got better. Now, we, we would do it carnally and in the flesh. We'd give them soup. We'd take their temperature. We'd give them some vitamin C. we keep them in bed. You know, we put a cold compress on their fevered forehead. Uh, but even in the flesh, we would do everything possible to make sure that our children were not sick. We would work diligently making the doctor's appointment and doing everything else to make sure uh, that we could see our child recover because it would bother any healthy parent to see their child struggling with any type of sickness for any uh, period of time. So if you can imagine, like the Bible says, if you know how to give your children good gifts, if you know how to good, do good things for your children, then how much more will I give you the Holy Spirit? How much more will I give you power and authority? How much more would I love to release healing in your body? And we have to think about that because this is practical. If you are a parent, leave spiritual out of it. Leave the Bible out of it. If we are just being practical and you love your child, and you want the best for your child, and just thinking from that common sense standpoint, then wouldn't you do everything that you knew how to do to make sure that your child got well or, or got the things that your, your child deserved, right? Um, so this is exactly how we need to view God, that he is our father who is a perfect father. We are by no means perfect parents to our earthly children, but God is a perfect, perfect father and a perfect father only brings perfect healing. So when we remember these things, it helps us so much more to believe in order to initiate and receive and maintain our healing. So with that, anytime you are ever going or ever experiencing sickness or ever under an attack, you just have to look at it practically and say, is sickness good? No then if God is good, can sickness be from God? If sickness is bad and God is only good, then how can we ever be double-minded to think that sickness can come from God? Carlin and I were talking about this to teach us a lesson, to test us, to see if we have faith. What healthy parent would ever do that to their child? I'm going to inject you with cancer to see if you have faith. Hey, child, while you're in bed sleeping, I'm going to inject you with AIDS as a test. A healthy parent would never, ever, ever do those things. We will be tested in different parts of our faith, but we will never be tested and God will never test us by putting sickness in our body. There is no good reason to do that. And God is only good and sickness is evil. All right. So once we know that now we can get the ball rolling. So Zach was sick. Then my daughter started to get a little bit sick. And then my husband yesterday, so we went out for his birthday to this really fun Airbnb and we came back. This was his 50th birthday uh, treat or his gift from myself to him because we wanted rest and relaxation. And at this Airbnb, this spirit was still there. And it was really remarkable because Zach, my son-in-law, invited me in to pray for him.
Because I asked him, I said, if you want me to pray for you and with you, I would love to do that. And he's very open. He's always allowed me to pray. And he's always seen the results of a good and loving father. Uh, and he's always received healing, which has been remarkable. But for whatever reason, uh, he wasn't. He, it wasn't that he was open. I just think he got taken out a little bit by it. And sometimes that happens. And then we start getting in the flesh. In other words, once this thing overtook him, it was so big already that it's overwhelming. Uh, but eventually he let me pray for him. And I did. And what I saw was a spirit of migraine. So he was having these very aggressive headaches as one of his symptoms. And he was putting these ice packs on his head. And he was getting these very aggressive migraines that knocked him out, just knocked him flat out, laying up, sleeping for several hours. And I didn't actually discern that spirit I mean, I knew he had headaches, but I didn't discern it was actually a spirit of migraine. There's a difference between having headaches, just a general headache. You listen to loud music, you're going to get a headache. You might eat some foods that don't agree with you. You can get a headache. Still attacks, okay? Uh, but a migraine is a very severe, severe type of headache, as you know. And I actually saw it as a spirit. So I actually was, ab I was able to discern it as an actual demonic spirit. Not just the, oh, hey, quit playing music so loud, or hey, maybe you shouldn't be eating, you know, MSG or some preservatives that are causing your headache. I actually saw the spirit and I casted it out. This was like his ninth day in to his, well, his eighth day in into his 11 days of sickness. I actually casted it out and it left. And from that point, he began to recover. This is why deliverance and healing are so important. All right. So now he started to recover, but that spirit of sickness, that spirit of infirmity was already floating because, you know, spirits move and groove, don't they? A, a virus will stay in your body, but if a virus can contaminate somebody else, a virus on you can contaminate somebody else. We have to understand that that's exactly the spirit realm and that's the way that works. <laughs>